Hello and welcome back to the Battling Barrow and part two of uh, my attempt at playing Death Trap Dungeon by Fighting Fantasy using the uh, Tin Man Games uh, Fighting Fantasy Classics available on Steam. Uh, it went wrong last week, uh, not for any, nothing, anything my fault really. Um, I, this is the game book I know really well, uh, really enjoy it, it's one of my favourites, uh, but the dice gods were against me last week and I got my bottom handed to me, so we're going to re-attempt this, so we're going to go back in, create a new character, um, someone might mention that perhaps I should use bookmarks, no one has yet, but just to uh, reiterate, I'm trying to avoid the use of bookmarks as much as possible, except for the end of each episode, obviously where I'm Save it there and come back and record in a later date. Uh, so, yeah, we did it on. We're definitely not doing it on hardcore because we've got our ass kicks. Let's roll some. Uh, let's roll some skills, shall we? Okay, first up, stamina. Let's see how we get on with this. That's not. Uh, skill. Come on. Uh, four and above. Way, yeah, boy. Uh, luck. Uh, ooh, I forget how much luck I'm gonna need in uh, Death Trap Dungeon. So, but four and above. Ooh, I'm not that lucky, but that will do, Donkey. That will do. What I might do? Take a potion with me. Uh, I did potion of. Oh. Oh, ew, I did, didn't I? Uh, oh, now my luck's quite low, so I don't know whether to go for luck this time or do I stick to program? Stick to program. I did skill. Yeah, uh, yeah. Set a uh, pay adventure. All this sort of reading, um, this bit here, we are going to. Um, I'll skip over. This, the video is going to jump now, and it will jump to where I was last time. No one wants to see that again. I quite like those stats. So, talking about bookmarks, I'll place one here. So if I die, I can just jump straight back to here, and I'll keep it. So if I die in that same fight again, I can. You won't see it. I can re keep replaying with those stats, so it won't be confusing to you. But yeah, I'm going to crack on now. One thing I didn't do last time is map me. So down here. Yeah, I'm gonna put my notepad pen quill. So I can make a map which I was probably a bit too cocky last time thinking, yeah, I've got this memorized. But yeah, let's let me do this. Okay, so here we are, back where we are. So what did I do? climb, didn't we? Climb, 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 climb. Uh, do you have any rope? I do. Uh, prize the left eye lupus, and here we are. Here we are back. Minus two skill. Uh, not too bad. Let's see if we can do it this time. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Back. Back with revenge. <laughs> Yeah! I was a bit worried then. I uh, probably just saw my load roll. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Oh. Come on. Ah, dice not mine. Still a draw. Come on. We can do this. Ooh. Yeah! God, I've got another one of these to go yet. Come on. Guardians. Yeah, and you're dead. Right. Got further than the last time. Next one. Oh, bloody hell. All, all rounds. If I hit him every round. Yeah. Oh! That's still going. Come on. Two more rounds. Me just whacking his in. Yeah, one more. Come on. Come on. Oh, sorry. Placing the bookmark there. There we go. 
don't want to ever do that again. So, yeah, that is where I would have placed a bookmark last time. Placing one there, because, darn it, so we're back up. We're back up to uh, where we were. Uh, I haven't gone this one at time yet, so if you win, you look down and see the... I don't know if that came out on my... Uh, <laughs> Microphone. Oh, I'm recording with windows open because it's obviously somewhat hot, allegedly. Uh, and a big truck went past my window. Um, I am using a, a noise removal tool, so that's why sometimes my voice may sound a bit funny. But anyway, you look down and see the crumpled bodies of the two flying guardians lying motionless on the floor. You start to prize out the eagle's emerald eye with the tip of your sword, and it becomes free, and you are surprised by its weight when it falls into your hand. Hoping it may be of use later, you put it in your backpack. Okay, uh, no, because if I remember right, that's Death Trap Dungeonness, I believe. Uh, we can try. Uh, we got a bookmark. No, no, no. Not a waste any time. Let's, let's climb down. Let's not waste your time or my time. If you want to play this and do it, you do it. Climb down the idol. Uh, back on solid ground again. On the cabin floor, you shake off the rope from your idol's neck. Ow. Oh, it's where I could lose my rope. Oh, yeah, there's me talking about luck. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, and now my luck's lower. We've got the rope still. Okay. The lasso loosens itself, and you are able to shake it free off the idol's neck. It falls to the floor with a loud clatter. Quickly coil the rope up again and put it in your backpack, wasting no more time in the cavern. You run towards the tunnel on the northern wall. There Map making bitty bitty there. Two, three, and nine. Um, not much further down the hallway, you come across a closed door on your left. Closed door on your left. Put your ear against the door, you listen to any but hear nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, ignore it. It's Death Trap Tundra. I don't have to explore everywhere to get it, so I just need to get to the end. Oh, the tunnel twists and turns but keeps steadily north. Ahead, you see a thin shaft of blue light streaming from the ceiling to the floor. It sparkles and shimmers and you see images of laughing faces in the light. If you wish to walk into the light, if you'd rather walk around the light. Can I go back and try the door? Maybe there was a clue in that door and I missed. I can't remember. Damn. I love it when I play these games and I go, yeah, this is one of my favourite. Know it quite well and then you get to a bit like this and you're like, I have a new memory of this place. Um, mm, mm, mm. It's the worst that can happen, eh? As uh, soon as your head goes under the blue light, you hear the sound of muffled voices. The faces are no longer laughing, they have changed their expression to ones of despair and anguish. A young girl's sad face hovers in front of you as she begins to whisper a poem. Transfixed, you listen intently, believing she has a special message for you as she recites. When the corridor doth water meet, do not make a quick retreat. Take a breath and jump in. If you troll, if you troll, you hope to win. So when we get some water in the corridor, let us jump in. Remember that, because I'm gonna forget. You remember that. You tell me. You shout at your screen. I will hear. Memorizing in the spirit girl's poem, you step through the shaft of light and quickly hit. Okay, uh, you come to an arch doorway set in the right hand wall of the tunnel. Uh, heavy, stone, heavy stone door is closed, there is an iron latch on the round handle. Um, no, I don't want to do anything in this tunnel, do I? Let's try it. Ah, worm is. Lifting the latch and pushing the steady, uh, heavy stone. I don't know why I did that. Like try the other door? You find yourself in a large cavern. Alarm. The light is dim and murky, but as your eyes begin to adjust, you see the walls are covered in green algae and running with moisture. The floor is strewn with straw. The atmosphere is warm, damp, 
damp and fetid. You don't you hear that word used there much more. Fetid. Good word. And a soft humming fills the air. You step gingerly through the straw towards one corner of the cavern. There appears to be a shallow pit. Peering wearily into the pit, you are disgusted to see a mass of pale, writhing worms. Some as much half a meter long right I'm out of here. Utterly nauseated, you are about to turn when you notice their undulating bodies are swarming around a dagger. The point held fast in a crack in the pit in the floor. The hilt is cased in leather studded opals and the blade is finished with strange rich blue, reddish black burnished metal you have never seen before. You long to touch the dagger but this would mean plunging your hand into one. No! No, I'm out. No! No, no, no. Death trap dungeon! It's a trap. No, sod that. No, I'm leaving this cavern. The tunnel ends shortly at a junction. That's actually grimed me out, man. I can't stand worms and maggots. What? <laughs> I don't have to, to put worm room on my map. Worm room. Okay, the tunnel ends shortly at a junction going left and right. Okay, um, we see a narrow passage looking left and right. So now we have there. Do you wish to head west or do you wish to head east? So I'm going to fill. I've done this and I'm going to go east. East? East. Yeah, so that's all about doing east. This is way so far. I see it as east. You look down the passage and you find yourself standing at the edge of a deep dark. Oh. Also, would be the passage continues east on the other side of the pit. Of course, it is. It's a pit. You think you could possibly jump over the pit, but you are not sure. There is a rope hanging from the ceiling over the center of the pit. Will you throw your shield over the pit and jump after it? Jump off it, continuing your possessions. Reach for the rope with your sword, and well, I've only done a bit of jumping earlier on, didn't I? Did a bit of jumping, um, so I feel I'm a good jump on my character. So that's telling me, that is telling me, we should jump over with all my possessions. Oh god. Mm. Let's get doing it straight. Lucky. Ah, 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 ah. Your armor and sword weigh you down. And, you, know, you realize horror that you're not going to reach the end of the pit. You crash inside the pit, two meters below the rim, and tumble headlong to the bottom. Uh, you land heavily on your back, but luckily your backpack cushion you fall, you lose one skill point and two stamina points. Got a potion of skill though while the attack keeps going down. Dark's pit is almost pitch black at the bottom of the pit, and you crawl along the floor, hope rope in front of you. Suddenly your hand touches something cold and hard and smooth. Your object is smooth and round, but you cannot figure out what it is. You place it in your backpack over to see uh, when you're out in the pit. You continue to crawl forward so you reach the pit wall. It was too smooth to climb. Bloody damn! And you have to cut your hand and toe hole into it with your sword. It takes some time, but you finally climb out of the pit on the east side. Yay, I'm not dead. Ouch, no. Uh, you immediately check the object in your backpack to discover you have found an orb of blood red ruby. You are absolutely delighted and head off east in high spirits. Looking at something under it. Okay. Okay, I wouldn't have found that if I ever. If I hadn't had, you know, a bit of lost. Skills aren't too bad, still 11. Stamina's still quite high. We have our provision, 10 provisions. We're doing all right. I'm not too, not too worried about that. That's what I've been doing. I normally note the uh, page numbers on. On my maps, just for future references. I have a project, future project involving Death Trap Dungeon for terrain making. So I do want to do this, but I guess we should replay this with many versions of the book I have. Mizono makes a sudden turn to the left and continues north. Here we go. As far as you can see, you soon arrive at a closed wooden door in the left hand wall if you wish to open this door. Um, that's in the left hand wall. 
is a door and that will take me to 12 or I can keep going north for 800 make a bad note for the numbers I think from now on I don't carry on walking north I don't want any wormy rules only a few meters further down the passage you see another closed door on the left hand wall uh, letter X is inscribed into the panel Putting you to the door, you hear nothing. Who should have opened the door? 87. Ooh. 87. Uh, or I can keep walking north to 7. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to open the door. The door opens into a large room. Hey! Cover uh, of the wizard's wizard friends. Look around the room and see nothing of interest apart from an alcove in the west wall and a stone chair in the room. Sitting in a chair is a skeleton of an armed warrior, possibly a contestant from years gone. The skeleton fingers are and a gripped type of parchment. When I'm here, I might as well take that parchment. Uh, touching parchment. Oh, I don't want to fight. Um, it's going to lurch his forward and rise from his chair in a series of jerky movements. It raises its sword to strike you, lunge and sideways. You draw your sword to defend yourself. It's a skellywag. How tough can they be? I just keep on looking around because I have both my cats on the floor just down here. There could be World War Three cats in a minute. Hey, it's alright. Let's have a fight. I don't do you. I'm confident with this one. Ooh, I'm not confident anymore. You rolled quite high. What is that? Goodness, okay. Fight. Come on, skill wagon. What's your skill 8? One is 11. Why am I. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Fine. Yes, we got it. Okay, here we go. Once again, you reach for departure, and this time it is lying amidst a pile of broken bones. Unfortunately, you see a map of the room with a drawing of a hideous creature inside it. Beneath the monster is a rhyme that reads, Should you meet the manticore of its tail, beware. Shield yourself against its spikes flying through the air. You fold a piece of parchment and put it in your backpack. Repeat the rhyme over and over. You walk across the alcove. I didn't really walk across the alcove. But now I'm across the alcove. Fair enough. At the back of the alcove, there are some steps leading down to the cellar. Cobweb to brush your face as you descend the cellar. Okay, we're going downstairs, are we? Fine, fine, fine. Uh, coppers brush your face as you descend. The cellar is quite low and the floor is strewn with rubbish and debris. In the middle of the wall opposite you is an archway which leads into another crystal lit tunnel. There are large mushrooms growing on the rubbish to your right. Um, <laughs> step through the arch, I guess we're going to step through the archway, aren't we? Uh, I'm not going to step through a crystal there, so I don't eat any of the mushrooms. Never eat mushrooms, random mushrooms, they could be poisonous. The tunnel continues west for several hundred meters, finally ending at some steps leading up to a closed trap door. You climb the steps slowly, so we go back up. Climb the steps slowly here, muffled voices above you in the dim light. You can see the trapdoor is not locked. Will you knock on the trapdoor? No. Will you burst through the trapdoor with your sword drawn? Well, yeah, it can't be anything friendly, can it? So, you throw the trapdoor open and run up steps uh, into a bright lit room. Okay. What is this? One, two, four. 
Uh, two goblins are sharpening their saw, sharp short swords on a stone set in the middle of the floor. You catch them momentary off guard and they quickly recover and rush forward to attack you. Beautiful. Let's fight. Gob goblin should be that tough. No, here we go. Dice gods, you suck. Roll higher. I don't get my ass kicked by goblins, do I? Alright. You dead. Okay, second goblin. Fire. Dice gods. Really? Should not have lost to a goblin. Not. Only the furniture in the goblin's room. Uh, the only furniture in the goblin's room. Uh, table, two chairs, a carpet on the wall. There are two closed doors. One on the west wall and one on the north wall. Here now. Um, it be in the goblin cupboard. A couple of things wooden mallet and some iron spikes. Uh, going off. Can't, can't. Door opens into another tunnel which rises gently in the distance. After walking uphill for a while, the tunnel levels out and you soon arrive at a door on the right hand wall, which is a withered hand it is now creepy. Uh, if we should open door to 10, Carol walking north, 78. Um, look, a room with a withered right hand on it, or a withered hand, is never fun, so we're going to ignore that. I <sighs> know, I think I might have a provision. Just a get me back up to there after that fight actually and go north there is an open pipe in the right hand wall pipe cool into the pipe yeah, and I'm going to go in the door but I'm going to crawl into a pipe am I uh, yeah you know I am <laughs> the pipe is wet and slimy, but you crawl on into the darkness, slithering and sliding as you go. Suddenly your hand touches something hard and square, and it feels as if it's made of wood. It rattles as you shake it, and you decide you must be holding a box if you should crawl back out the pipe. Your grandfather. Uh, Press on further down the pipe. Look, I'm, I've got what I came for. Let's, let's not temp fate. Okay, I've got a box. Oh, I'm going to see what's in the box. Removing the box lid in the light of the time you find an iron key and a large gem. Yay, you're getting one luck. Need that. That's great. Uh, set off north once again. One, four, two. Uh, how big is this dungeon? My mapping might be a bit overzealous on the paper. Uh, I'm reaching the top already. <laughs> Might need to be a bit more conservative. There is a new branch uh, in the tunnel on the left. Ahead, you see two bodies lying on the floor. You set down the pier, down the new tunnel, but see no doors or creatures. You decide against walking against it. With your sword drawn, you walk over to where the body lies. Let's so wait, how? New branch on the tunnel on the left. Decide against. Two uh, bodies. Okay. Well, they are choice, okay? The bodies are those of two orc guards, at least one of your the bodies are those of two orc guards, at least one of your rivals in the trial of champions must still be ahead of you. Quick search of the bodies produce nothing apart from a necklace of teeth hanging around one of the necks of the orcs. You should wear the necklace. Well, the thing is with this is right. Why would it force me to go to the bodies and not down a tunnel if it didn't want me to wear the necklace? This is either it telling me to wear the necklace, or it's Ian Livingston being a cunning demon and just tricking me to wear the necklace. 
or jugs on you because I'm wearing the necklace. A necklace and amulet of strength. Gain one skill and one stamina point. Continue north. So. Yeah, I've got my skill back up and the stamina's not too bad. Right, we're happy now. Right, 282. Very happy with that. Oh, hello. I always used to think he had sunglasses on, but I think it's an eye patch, isn't it? I used to think it was shades, like here is this, and here, but I love the picture anyway. Tunnel suit ends at a junction. Standing in here alone, I wonder which way to go is one of your rivals. It's one of the barbarians. You called out to him. At first, he does not answer. He merely stands. Stares at you coldly, his hands firmly gripping his axe. You walk over and ask him which way he is heading. He grunts his reply, saying he is going west. You may go with him if you wish. Uh, so he's going west. He's going west or go east alone. 388. 22. Uh, clear company would be good, wouldn't it? He can do all the fighting. I can do all the treasure gathering, so uh, teamwork. Uh, teamwork. 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 Although you are slightly uneasy in each other's company, knowing that there could only be one winner in trying to champions, you are both content to share the benefits of a temporary alliance. You begin to tell each other of your exploits so far, of the monsters and traps encountered and the dungeons overcome. Walking alone, you soon come to the edge of a wide pit. It is too deep and too dark to see at the bottom. The barbarian offers to lower you to the bottom uh, with his ropes and he has a torch which he can light. For you to use, if you accept the barbarian's offer, it too too soon to um, Game of Thrones. This isn't it, uh, and you have to betray me. I'm gonna lower him in just in case there's something cool there because I'm a bit devious, isn't I? So uh, I don't want to both jump. We've had a bit of bad experience with jumping. No to it, but to accept his offer. Okay, uh, you tie the rope around your waist and hold off. <laughs> being really naughty to my left. Um, you tie the rope around your waist and hold onto uh, the lighted torch given to you by From, as your barbarian ally calls himself. You hold, you're taking hold of the slack rope from Lois <laughs> slowly over the edge of the pit and down into the dark. It's like really difficult to read when I can't try to get something out of my bin to my left. Stop that, Elvis. Stop it, Elvis. What are you doing? You can see the light of your torch on the pit are extremely smooth and you drop some 20 meters before hitting the bottom of the pit. You see another tunnel heading north and you call out from and tell him your discovery. He calls back saying he's going to tie the rope around the beautiful rock edge and come down and join you. Here and climbing down and seeing you together again, you, know, you set up north in the new tunnel. So we'll get down here. Climb down here, climb here to here, and we go to oh, okay. Nothing interesting down there, though, unfortunately. Uh, on a stone ledge in eternal wall, you see two dusty leather bound books from grunts as contempt for the written word, urging you to leave the books. Will you open a red book? Open a black book? Continue north. Books. Black books can only be evil, but red books can be evil because blood reds. So. But black. I actually wanted to clear off red. <laughs> oh, this isn't bad. The book's pages are sealed together, but a small hole has been cut in the middle of them, just large enough to hold a small corked bottle containing clear liquid. You show it from who holds it up in his hand, indicating he does not want you to come anywhere near him with it. The disgust is for unknown is strongly evident. Will you drink the liquid? Rub the liquid in your hands, open the red book so we can leave the bottle and book and continue north. I don't want to do that just yet. So, uh, oh, what's the worst that can happen is drink it. The liquid is magical potion which will enable you to detect any traps. 
It's the only thing when he says that you get excited, it's like, oh no, I can't go above my initial. Um, if you've not done so, open the red book. Oh, sure, I wanted to do first of all, so let's do that now. As you open the book, it begins to disintegrate and the pages turn to dust in your hands. You manage to keep a few fragments and read the handwritten script. The book appears to be about monsters, and from what you can make out, it contains a full description of a monster called the Blood Beast. It is a hor horrific, bloated creature with tough, spiny skin and facial blisters which burst open to become mock eyes evolved to hide the blood beast's only weak spot. It's real eyes and this thing down here. It's that thing we're talking about. The blood beasts usually dwell in pools of fetid slime, that's that word again, which give off poisonous gas. This gas is so strong it can easily knock people unconscious. The blood beast, although too bulbous to haul itself out of its slime pool, has a long and vicious tongue which it wraps around its victims before it drags them into the pool. As the victim's flesh starts to decompose in the vile slime, the blood beast will feed from it. Next we've got this information that is going to come in handy. You tell From about the grotesque blood beast, but he merely shrugs his shoulders and tells you to get going. If not done so already, otherwise you continue north. 369. Okay. Tunnel turns sharply to the right. Uh, continuing east as far as you can see. I always like that when I do my map. I like the old Final Fantasy books. I always have north, south, east, and west. Uh, and so when it does things, where it says turn to right, and you're mapping out, and it says you're going east, and that's where you're actually traveling. Love that. So it means I haven't got hopelessly lost. So that's good. From stops and tells you to halt as well. He turns his head slowly from the side, listening. I hear footsteps coming down the tunnel towards us. Draw your sword. You both crouch down to hide in the shadows. Not a minute too soon, and a few minutes later, you see the silhouette of two armed figures approaching. From jumps up and dashes forward. Oh, is that a Leroy Jenkins? Screaming a loud battle cry, probably. Leroy Jenkins! There are two cave trolls in front of you. They have a cave troll. From attacks the first with his battle axe, and you. Run to aid and attack the second cave troll. Oh, I think not anything. We can't go stealthy with a barbarian. What is it? 11? Oh my goodness, this is going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be painful. Look at these high rollers with both of us. Can't he roll low? Oh, we are definitely scoffing some food after this. Okay, three more rounds if I hit him each round. Two more rounds if I hit him each round. I don't want to test my luck because I don't have the luck to spare. Draw. Still two more rounds. Two more rounds. <laughs> ah, this troll is doing me. No! Why did they do that? Why did the dice do that? I would have flipping beat. Why did the dice do that? They. The game cheated! Oh yeah, I'm just got some food. <laughs> Can't go over that. I'm a bit. You look to your left to see from standing over the cage for all he is slain. Blood is pouring from a deep cut on his shoulder. We both got ducked up there, mate. But it does not seem to worry him, it's bothering me. You search the bodies of trolls, but you find nothing apart from a bone ring on a leather cord hanging from the neck of one of them. The ring is gave for a symbol that Fromm recognises. He explains that it must have belonged to the Druids of the North, and an ancient talisman such as this will increase your powers if your body is able to accept it. Fromm will not touch it. Um, I don't think my body... I'm not willing to risk this. This... 
No, not willing to risk it. Or should I save it and put her? No, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I just want to crack on. I'm too, too duffed up. I don't have the. If it says I lose four stamina points for putting it on, I don't have the stamina to spare. Uh, the tunnel leads into a damp, high ceiling cavern with a rock strewn floor. Long, dripping teeth like stalactites hang down threateningly. Their constant dripping creating murky, milky pools on the floor. The tunnel carries on through an archway in the shape of the demonic mouth research chamber. Head straight to the archery. Uh, where's the archery going? Damn place in cavern. We can search it. Oh, or we can. Oh, it sits down. Just. Oh, let's get quiet. Oh. Um, I'm just trying to think his half hour as well. I said I wanted to leave them, but I did want to get quiet. Now let's carry on this play for another five minutes. So I'm gonna carry on. Duh! Tunnel ends at a large oak door. From waste no time in testing handle and is somewhat surprised. To find the door unlocked, he pushes it open, walks into a torture chamber, sitting alone in an ornate chair is a dwarf who bids you to enter the chamber. As you do so, the orc door swings shut behind you. Adventurers, you have done well to get this far, says the dwarf in a deep voice. However, as you both know, there can be only one winner in the trial of the champions. As trial master, it is my duty to Baron Shukumvik to let only one of the most able continue. Therefore, I must devise a test of wits and strength to eliminate one of you. Please do not attempt to dispose of me. It would be utterly pointless, for as you can see, there is no obvious way out of this chamber, and I only know where the hidden exit lies. Now, if you would care to decide between you who will go first, I shall make the necessary preparations. Hope that was deep enough. Um, <laughs> um, you look from uh, suddenly angry that your effective partnership might come to an end. He leans over and whispers you that you should try to kill the dwarf and not worry about it. You didn't take him dwarf, no, if I persuade him. Okay, no, let's do the test, because this is obviously what it is. Let's try the champions. We are testing, and we're going to persuade him. You tell from there is no point in killing the dwarf, as you will never find you out. Yeah, that's it. Chamber alone. You argue an opportunity of tricking Dwarf might arise later once you have found the exit from the chamber. If you intend to go through the Dwarf's test, yeah. You tell the Dwarf you are ready and he beckons you to follow him, telling From to wait for his return. Ow, hoping From's gonna go first. Secret door opens in the chamber wall and you follow the Dwarf into a circular room. He closes. Right, there we go. So closes the door behind you and hands you two bone dice telling you to throw them on the floor you roll a six and a two total of eight dwarf asks you to roll again but this time you must predict your roll would it be the same or higher than uh, oh i don't know uh, that test this is just gambling and it's luck and I don't know. Uh it's six, I'd definitely go higher. It is You guess the total be more than that. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no, I really wasn't thinking and I just clicked. Uh maybe it's a more test. Uh maybe I should have saved it. I could have sort of done this off cam but <laughs> I would have done that. Six, seven, eight. Well, you rolled an eight. Uh, total was eight. All that. Uh, the door flips at the dice. Not very good at playing the odds, are you? No! I regret you must suffer a penalty. Continue. From out your pocket, you produces two pills. One stamp with letter S and one stamp with letter L. I should choose which.
Luck L. Yeah, I thought that would be L because he's going to got it. So it can be skill or stamina is going to be lost or luck. Ugh. Maybe I should have taken that potion of fortune. Pill makes you feel an likeness, and Dwarf tells you you can now go through the second stage of touch, catching for a wicker basket and forms you things a snake. He lifts out a little snake on the floor. The cobra rears up in the air, ready to strike. Dwarf tells you he wishes you to test your reaction. You must grasp the cobra barehanded with his head, avoiding his digging fang. You crack down the floor, tensing yourself for the way to test your skill. Got this covered, that's why I didn't want to. He's going 12 below, and you always say, Yeah, excellent. Nailed it. Lightning speed, you thrust your hand out and grip the cobra below its mouth and you lift up, lift it up, arm outstretched and dangle it in front of the dwarf. He doesn't flinch, but he says, but stay, says in his calm, expressionless way, please put the cobra back in the basket and prepare the final part of the test. Follow me. You do what he says and follow him back into the chamber where From is pacing up and down off seat ill at ease. You wave at him while the dwarf opens a second door. And you walk on through and wait for him. Again you comply and find yourself in a circular room. Although this one resembles a small arena, the floor is covered with sand and a balcony runs around the arena wall. Opposite the secret door by which you entered is an ominous looking wooden door. Suddenly you hear a shout and look up to see the dwarf standing on the balcony. He throws two pieces of paper down to you. On one of them are the words, no crop is written. On the other, ruin moat is written. Um, uh, If you arrange the letters of the words, you'll find the name of two creatures. You may you may choose which to fight. If you know what the solution to no crop is, enter your answer here. If you know the solution to ruin mode, I know the solution to ruin my guys instantly. I've picked that out. No crop is. I don't know what no crop is, but I know what remote is, but I don't want to fight it. Perhaps no crop is would be easier, but we don't have time, do we? We're on to 40 minutes already, roughly, probably more than that, because I forgot I recorded the intro a bit, so um, I've been recording this for... Alright, okay, let's... Oh god, now I've got to remember how to spell it. not O is it? It's not A. Calling out to Dwarf that you're ready to fight a Minotaur. I'm not really. The wooden door rises and so you see a fearsome beast. Half man, half bull steps into the arena. Sting blows from its nostrils and it works itself into a rage, ready to attack. Suddenly it rushes forward, swinging its double-handed axe. You must fight. I must put a bookmark here and we are going to end it there because this has gone on far too long, this video. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep it down to about half hour. Um, so yeah, we will fight this Minotaur next time. The nice thing is, if I lose, I can just go <laughs> back to the bookmark thinking, see, thinking. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. I enjoy playing Fighting Fancy um, games. Uh, share this around to, I don't know if you're members of Fighting Fancy groups or Reddit and things like that. Share it around because I'm not and then let me know where you shared it so I can join because um, I love Fighting Fantasy. I want to talk about it more with different groups and different people. So yeah, please do that for me. That would be spanking. But until the next video guys, stay safe, take care.